may be thinking about moving to Chicago or maybe you've already decided, well, before you actually make the move and ship your whole family out here or ship yourself and all your stuff out here, I wanna to talk today about 21 questions that you must ask yourself before you move to Chicago. So I really did my best to put myself in the shoes of you who is thinking about moving to a new city. So I just thought, you know, if I was moving to a new city outside of Chicago, let's just say I was moving to Salt Lake City, Utah. What are the different questions that I would have? And of course, there's different types of people that may be moving. So you may find yourself as an individual, you may be a couple with your significant other, or you may have a family, right? And so for all of these reasons, there are gonna be different questions that you're gonna wanna ask yourself before you make such a big move to a new city. So I'm gonna do my best in this video to break down questions that you must ask yourself before you move here to the beautiful city of Chicago. Welcome back to another video. My name is Jordan Pyle and I'm your go-to Chicago real estate agent. My team and I with Pyle Residential have been servicing the city of Chicago for the last 10 years. And we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you every single day. So whether you're thinking about making a move in nine days or 90 days, feel free to text the number on the screen and a team member or myself will get in touch with you within 24 hours. I also put a lot of great resources down in the description. So be sure to check those out. Do us a favor and like the video, comment any questions you have down below and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you catch all our future videos. So with that being said, let's jump on into the video. All right, so diving right in with question number one. Where in the hell do you wanna live here in this beautiful city? There's 77 different neighborhoods, so how do you choose? Well, the city offers a variety of neighborhoods, each with its own unique charm and character. From the vibrant streets of downtown to the cozy residential areas, Chicago has something for everyone. So if you're looking for a bustling urban experience, you have neighborhoods such as the Loop and River North and even the West Loop, which offer a vibrant atmosphere, skyscrapers, world-class restaurants, as well as nightlife. And on the other hand, you want something a little bit more laid back with a little bit more of that neighborhood feel. Well, of course you have my favorite neighborhood, which is Lincoln Park, Lakeview, and then Bucktown and Wicker Park, just to name a couple others. So you really have to understand this for yourself. And so what I did is I wanted to pull up some actual statistics. And so bungalow.com, they developed a ranking system where they took the top nine most popular neighborhoods based on a certain set of criteria in order to give us exactly what those top nine are. They took into consideration atmosphere, nightlife, entertainment, shopping, restaurants, beauty and parks, amenities such as schools, public transit, points of interest, and then lastly, experience such as safety, affordability, and walkability. So based on that set of criteria, they were able to develop the top nine most popular neighborhoods here in Chicago. All right, so referencing my little handy dandy screen over here, the top neighborhoods in Chicago, and I'm gonna work my way from number nine to number one, number nine came in at West Loop. Number eight, Bucktown. Number seven, River North. Number six, West Town and Wicker Park. There are some distinctions there, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, number five was Lakeview. We've talked about that one, and that was actually in my top five that I listed on my last video I did. Number four was Streeterville, which is interesting. Number three is The Loop, which I think is even more interesting. Honestly, I would never live in The Loop, so I'm not sure exactly how that came about, but that's the list. Uh, number two, Old Town, which I love. And then number one, it was a tie actually between my favorite Lincoln Park and the Gold Coast. So I hope that gives you a little bit of context, a little bit of flavor. If you want, you can go to bungalow.com. You can probably find this exact list. You can read in a little bit more about why they ranked these in the way that they did. The last part of this section, I just wanted to talk a little bit about like migration trends. So what are the top areas that people are moving from to Chicago? And then what are the top areas that people are moving from Chicago to other areas? So you'll see from the graphic on the screen here that in June 2023 through August 2023, 17% of Chicago homebuyers searched to move out of Chicago, while 83% looked to stay within the metropolitan area. So despite some of the things that you hear with everyone leaving Chicago, well, actually only 17% of people consider moving out. That being said, where are people moving to Chicago from? Across the nation, 4% of homebuyers searched to move into Chicago from outside metros. Denver homebuyers searched to move to Chicago more than any other metro, followed by Rockford and Lafayette. So Rockford is in Illinois, and I believe Lafayette's also in Illinois. So outside of the state itself, and on top of that, and even more so, people from Denver decided to move into Chicago, which is interesting to me because I love Denver, and if anything, I'd be moving out to Denver for the mountains, for the 300 days of summer, or sunshine, I guess they will call it, 
But those are the statistics from June 2023 through August of 2023. Now you may ask where are people moving out of Chicago to? Just for the sake of this video, we'll go into it, but obviously we're talking about mainly trying to keep this focused on people moving into Chicago. And it said 83% of Chicago home buyers searched to stay within Chicago. However, if they were thinking about moving, Milwaukee in Wisconsin was the most popular destination followed by Cape Coral and Miami, which makes complete sense to me. Uh, sunny South Florida is uh, calling the hearts of a lot of people these days. So we just highlighted the top three areas that people are moving from to Chicago. However, you can see now on the list on the screen that people are moving to Chicago from Denver being number one, Rockford, Illinois, oh, Lafayette, Indiana, that makes more sense, Peoria, Illinois, Boston, Massachusetts, Springfield, Illinois, New York at number seven, Champaign, Illinois at number eight, Indianapolis, Indiana at number nine, and then Minneapolis, Minnesota coming in at number 10. All this being said, obviously your situation, we wanna tailor this to you specifically. So if you have any questions about this, like I said before, feel free to just text the number on the screen. Neither myself or one of my team members will get in touch with you. And we'll talk specifics about your actual situation and then we will tailor our home search approach to your situation specifically. All right, so now that we've thought about maybe what neighborhoods we wanna live in, now we need to think about how much is it actually gonna cost me to get the type of home that I desire and need. And this could play into the neighborhood that you ultimately land in. And so housing prices throughout the city of Chicago can vary quite significantly. So depending on the different neighborhoods and the type of home you desire and need, it's essential to budget and explore your options to find the right fit for you and your family. So for example, in downtown Chicago, you can find a lot of luxury high-rise apartments and condos with stunning views of the city, but they come with a higher price tag and often with a lot higher homeowner association dues, right? So if you need some more affordable options, you may wanna to look to somewhere like a Logan Square or a Pilsen. You also have some different neighborhoods such as like Andersonville, Edgewater, really the further that you get north or the further that you get southwest or the further you get west, outside of like that city bubble is when you're gonna find a little bit more affordability. So let's just dive into a quick stat here. So you have some generalities about the Chicago market and how much homes are gonna cost you. In August of 2023, home prices were actually up 4.6% compared to this time last year. And they were selling for a median price of $340,000. On average, homes in Chicago sell after 56 days on the market compared to 59 days last year. And lastly, to round this out, there were 2,513 homes sold in August this year, down from 2,000 688 last year and so what's interesting about the Chicago real estate market is really we've been experiencing just like a lot of the rest of the country we've been experiencing an inventory issue so even though interest rates are at all-time highs I just had someone lock in at like 7.325 the other day which is a pretty high interest rate um, but even you know despite the fact that interest rates are you know kind of withholding some buyers from the market the extreme lack of inventory is continuing to keep home prices very stable, if not increasing. So since there's not as many homes for sale, but there's still a, a pretty good amount of demand, home prices, as you saw, went up 4.6% year over year from last year, even though we are now at an interest rate that is, you know, three or 4% higher than the early parts of 2022. So this is a trend that we expect to continue as inventory is the bottleneck in the market. This very fact is one of the main reasons why a lot of investors and a lot of people think about Chicago in terms of investing their hard earned cash. Chicago is a very stable market, so we're not gonna see the crazy appreciation, we're not gonna see crazy depreciation in different times of the historical and the economic cycles. However, we're just gonna remain very, very flat. And so we haven't really seen too much of a dip this year um, in any of the neighborhoods. Definitely some of the neighborhoods like the city center has been struggling ever since the pandemic. But some of these other neighborhoods that we're discussing and some of the ones that I work in most, such as Lincoln Park and Lakeview, these are always just going to be stable, safe investments. So depending on your situation, you may end up in one of these different 77 neighborhoods and all of them have different median home sale prices, different rent prices. So just be sure to do your research as it pertains to each neighborhood because that number of $340,000 is a generality for all of Chicago. So now we've talked about some of the places you may wanna live and how much it's gonna cost you to live there. So question number three, we're gonna switch it up a little bit and it's gonna be, where will my kids go to school? Understandably, if you're watching this video, you may not have kids, you may be single, you may be a young couple without kids, but if you currently have children or you're thinking about starting a family, you're gonna to wanna to research the school options here in Chicago, and there's a lot of great ones. 
The city offers a range of public, private, as well as charter schools. So take the time to visit different schools, speak with parents, gather information, join Facebook groups to ensure your kids get the best education. So you have neighborhoods like Lincoln Park and North Center that are known for their excellent public schools, such as Lincoln Park High School. And you also have neighborhoods like Hyde Park and Beverly that have renowned private schools. So consider factors such as school rankings, extracurricular activities, and proximity to your potential neighborhood that we discuss in uh, questions one and two. So I'm actually gonna add the link to niche.com down in the description. And they provided a list of the 2024 best school rankings, depending whether you're looking for public, private, elementary or high school, and much more. So the link, as I said, is down in the description. I'm also gonna put the link for greatschools.org, which you can go on there, and as you can see on the screen right now, you can search for a specific address, and it'll tell you what uh, school district that address belongs to. So this can go for high schools, this also goes for elementary, and it gives you private options as well. Depending on where you're at in the city and where you're living, your kids will be in a certain school district. And of course, you can send your kids to private schools anywhere in the city, but if you're thinking about public schools, then you really wanna pay attention to what is the school district that my specific address or a potential address that I'm considering, what is the school district that's associated with that? So now I don't have any kids, so I don't have a ton of experience with the school system here in Chicago, but a lot of my clients here in the city of Chicago make a lot of their housing decisions due to this reason alone, right? So they wanna make sure that their kids are getting the best education. They wanna make sure that they're keeping their kids in the schools with their friends. And so a lot of people are making buying and selling decisions based on the different school systems. All right, so coming in at question number four, will I have a car with me in Chicago? And what does that mean? How much is it gonna cost? So let's talk about transportation. So do you have a car that you're planning to bring? Should you bring a car? Do you really need a car? Well, this question will help you determine the need for parking, the availability of public transportation, and the cost of owning a vehicle in Chicago. Chicago offers an extensive public transportation system, including buses and trains, so it makes it really easy to get around the city without a car. We are known for our grid system as well, and so from a transportation system in general, and just general ease and flow of the city, Chicago is actually well known for being very organized and very efficient. You have the Chicago Transit Authority, also known as the CTA, uh, which provides convenient and affordable options for daily commuting. So they have multiple train lines and bus routes covering the entire city, and it only costs you a couple bucks, you know, two to five dollars a day in order to utilize these lines. However, if you prefer the flexibility of having a car, consider factors such as parking availability, traffic conditions, and the cost of owning and maintaining a vehicle in Chicago. And if you do have a car here in Chicago, definitely be prepared and budget for new tires because there's a ton of potholes it's either winter time or it's construction time. And so if it's not construction time, typically the city is just absolutely littered with potholes. So you have to be a very proactive driver and you have to make sure that you're avoiding these things because maintenance for your car can get out of control if you're not paying attention and you're continuously running over potholes and popping your tires. So if you do have a car in the city, definitely need to consider gas, right? And gas can be all over the board. Uh, we had a time where I think gas hit like $7 when, when gas just went through the roof. However, today, Chicago current gas prices, so the average gas prices today are for regular gas, it's $4.52, mid-grade $4.92, premium coming in at $5.45. So right now I'm basically factoring about $4.50 to $5 per gallon, and I think my car takes 17 gallons, and so you can do the math, but it's somewhere between like $80 and $100 every time I fill up. So definitely is an expense that you wanna consider. And if you do a lot of driving, um, you know, if you're going to and from the city, you might wanna actually just fill up your car in the suburbs where it's gonna be slightly cheaper. Usually it's probably like a dollar, dollar fifty cheaper, maybe 75 cents um, versus downtown Chicago. It's obviously gonna be more expensive. So the other thing you wanna consider if you have a car is uh, auto insurance, right? And so Chicago's cheapest auto insurance costs somewhere between $672 and $1,212 per year, depending on your provider. So that's $150 to $230 more annually than you pay in the rest of Illinois, but still less than the national average of $1,427 per year. The last thing I wanna mention on here is if you do have a car, you're gonna to need to think about parking. So you're gonna to need to think about off the street parking, you're gonna to need to think about uh, monthly parking, if you have a place to park at your property or not. Sometimes you're parking on the street. I used to park on the street back in the day, do not recommend it. Um, I would always recommend you have some sort of off the street parking, whether it's like a you know, parking lot that's gated, that's actually what I have today. 
Um, I came from a place that had a garage where I paid about $200 a month for, which was downtown in the city, like, like the River North area. Um, and you can also just need to consider like pay to park. So we have different meter parking and that can range from, you know, a dollar to $8 an hour, depending on different parts of the city. So all of these fees can add up. So if you have a car payment, you have gas, you have insurance, you have uh, different parking throughout the city at different times. You know, for me, I, I like to factor, I don't have a car payment anymore, uh, but when I did, I like to factor roughly about like six, $700 a month. And nowadays it's closer to like three or 400 because I don't have a payment, but it is a significant expense that you're gonna wanna consider if you want to have a car here in Chicago. All right, question number five, what are the grocery options? So grocery shopping is obviously a critical part of our daily lives. It's crucial to know about the different grocery options here in the Windy City. So from large supermarkets to local farmers markets, the city offers a diverse range of choices to meet your culinary needs. You obviously have the major grocery store chains such as Jewel Asco, Mariano's and Whole Foods, which are scattered throughout the city, which provide a wide selection of fresh produce, pantry staples and specialty items. You also have Trader Joe's, which is my favorite grocery store. And additionally, Chicago boasts several farmers markets, such as the famous Green City Market in Lincoln Park, where you can support local farmers and find organic and artisanal products. So personally, I spend about $150 every two weeks on groceries. And I'm a single guy, I live alone, I do eat a lot, I eat a lot of meats and protein. Um, so for me, my grocery bill, if I don't have to you know, re-up on the different condiments or the um, trash bags or the different uh, maybe personal items such as lotions and eye drops and things like that. If it's strictly groceries, it's somewhere between 100 and 150 dollars. At times, if it's a full load, I'm spending closer to 200. So I budget about 350 to 400 dollars per month. But I eat good and I try to eat as much as I can at home versus eating out. So I would rather have a slightly higher grocery bill and having like an eating out budget that's slightly less. Question number six, where will I work out and how much is it gonna cost me? So staying fit and active is essential and Chicago has no shortage of fitness facilities. So whether you prefer gyms, uh, maybe a yoga studio or even outdoor activities, the city provides numerous options uh, to help you stay healthy. So consider the location and cost of fitness centers when choosing your neighborhood. Many neighborhoods have well-equipped gyms with the state-of-the-art equipment and offer various membership options to fit different budgets. On the higher end, you have places like East Bank Club, which is where I go. You have various different equinoxes throughout the city and also Lifetime and a place called Midtown. And if you're thinking about or wanting something a little bit more affordable, there are Chicago Athletic Clubs, a place throughout the city. You also have Export, just to name a couple. Budget roughly $40 a month on the low end, upwards to $250. For a gym membership budget, somewhere in the range of $40 a month on the low end, upwards of $250 on the high end. And if you enjoy outdoor workouts, Chicago is home to many beautiful parks and trails, such as the 606 Trail and of course, the Lakefront Trail where you can bike, you can run, you can swim and walk, you can take in the scenic views, and of course, you can also go to a variety of different workout classes such as Barry's Boot Camp. I think you have uh, Shred 415, I think it's called. Uh, you have the F, oh no, it's F45. You have Shred 415, you have Train Moment. There's so many different workout classes. And for me, this is something that I think is a great way if you're new to the city and you're trying to make friends, going to the same fitness class every single week at the same time, you'll start to get to know people that go to that class at that same time. And this is a good way for you to build relationships in a new city if you're thinking about that and if you desire that. Question number seven, how many people live in the city of Chicago? Chicago is a bustling city with a vibrant population with over 2.7 million residents in the downtown area. And the city offers a diverse community and a wealth of cultural experiences. So you can embrace the energy and diversity that comes along with living in such a populous city. Engage with different communities, explore cultural events and festivals, and make connections with people from various backgrounds. The thriving population of Chicago contributes to its vibrant and dynamic atmosphere, making it an incredibly exciting place to live. Coming in at question number eight, what are the job opportunities here in Chicago? So when you're moving to a new city, it often involves considering job opportunities. Chicago is a major economic hub, offering a wide range of industries and career paths. So you're gonna to wanna to research the job market and connect with local resources to explore the different employment options available. The city is known for its strong financial sector with companies like JP Morgan Chase and Northern Trust having a significant presence. 
Additionally, Chicago is home to a thriving tech scene with companies like Groupon and Grubhub originating from the city. You also have McDonald's, Uber, United, and Google, which are common companies people work for who decide to move to Chicago. You also have healthcare, education, and manufacturing as prominent industries in Chicago, providing a diverse range of job opportunities. So a lot of people moving to Chicago, they are definitely moving here for work. So when you guys are reaching out to me from this channel, I would say probably five or six out of 10 are moving here because of a job opportunity. So there are definitely no shortage. There are all different industries that are represented. Um, I have a lot of different connections. So if you are thinking about moving to Chicago and maybe you don't have a job opportunity, but you need one, well, reach out to me and I can try to connect you with somebody in my network that I know that may have an opportunity for you. Question number nine, what is the cultural makeup in Chicago? Chicago is known for its rich cultural diversity. So you have people with various backgrounds that call the city home, contributing to a vibrant tapestry of traditions, cuisines, as well as celebrations. Embrace the multiculturalism and explore the different cultural communities within the city of Chicago. You have neighborhoods like Chinatown, Greek Town, and Little Italy, which offer unique cultural experiences where you can enjoy authentic cuisine, festivals, and cultural events. The city's melting pot of culture adds depth and vibrancy to its social fabric, making Chicago a truly global city. Question 10, what are taxes like? Taxes play a significant role in our finances and in our daily budgets. So before moving to Chicago, familiarize yourself with the tax structure, including income tax rates, uh, property tax rates, as well as sales taxes. And understanding the tax implications will help you plan your budget effectively. In Chicago, the sales tax rate is currently 10.25%, which includes state, county, and city taxes. Property taxes can vary depending on the neighborhood and the value of the property, but the average effective tax rate in Cook County is 2.19%. So it's essential to consult with a tax professional to ensure you have a clear understanding of your tax obligations and how they're gonna impact your overall finances if you decide to move here to Chicago. Question 11, what is the best way to meet people? Your social life. So moving to a new city can be daunting, but don't worry. Uh, Chicago is a friendly and welcoming place. To meet new people and build a social network, consider joining local clubs, attending community events, or participating in social activities that align with your interests. As I told you before, I like to go and do different gym classes and fitness classes because that aligns with my interests. And it also attracts and basically puts you in the same place of other people that share that common interest. All right, coming in at number 12, what is the weather like? Of course, you've heard it before. Winters here in Chicago can be awfully brutal. So you're gonna wanna consider that. You're gonna wanna consider all the seasons, right? In my opinion, June, July, August, and even a little bit into September, like we are right now, we're almost through September, but they're absolutely beautiful months. And so I think that during those four months of the year, and maybe even, you know, five months, including May, it is the best city in the entire world. And if you've been here and visited during that time, you know what I'm talking about. And on the other side of the coin, once you get through the summer market, you start going into fall. Fall is beautiful, you know, it's football season. There's a lot of different cool things around the city that are very fall themed and you can go, you know, not too far out of the city and you can go to apple orchards or you can go and uh, do whatever you wanna do. But the fall is a beautiful market, you know, jean weather, sweatshirts, I love that time of year. And as soon as you get through that, it usually doesn't last very long, you do have the infamous Chicago winter. And the Chicago winter, can't even tell you any different way. You know, it gets dark at like 4 p.m. So you wake up, it's dark. You go to bed, it's dark. It's cold, it's windy. Uh, you have a lot of, you have decent amount of snow, but really it's just the wind chill, right? And so the last few years in Chicago, the winter actually, we haven't really got that much snow, but it gets very cold just because you're getting the lake effect and the wind coming off of Lake Michigan. And so you just need to be prepared. And so what I always say is that the winters make us stronger and they make us appreciate the spring, summer, and the fall that much more. So of course, if you live in Chicago or anywhere in the Midwest, you're gonna have to deal with the winter, but I think the advantages of the other times of the year far outweigh, you know, maybe just having to bundle up and just really put your head down and work your way through the winter months. Question 13, what is the airport system or where do I fly in and out of? So if you're planning to travel frequently, it's essential to know the different airports in Chicago. The two main ones is O'Hare International Airport and Midway International Airport. O'Hare International Airport is one of the busiest airports in the entire world and offers a wide range of domestic and international flights. Midway, on the other hand, um, 
you know, it is primarily serves domestic flights and is a convenient option for travelers within the United States. Both airports are well connected to the city center with various transportation options uh, to and from, making it a very seamless travel experience. And what I love so much about Chicago is that you're, since you're in the Midwest, I love that you can go pretty much anywhere in the country within like a three and a half to four hour flight. You know, so it, in comparison, if you lived in California and you're going to visit family in New York, you know, that's gonna be a much longer flight. But since you're located in the Midwest, you can go east, you can go south, you can go west. And typically I have noticed that these flights are not gonna be more than about four hours. Coming in at question number 14, what is the cost of living in Chicago? We briefly touched on the cost of housing earlier, but it's essential to consider the overall cost of living in Chicago. Take into account expenses such as transportation, groceries, entertainment, as well as healthcare to ensure your budget aligns with your potential move to the city of Chicago. Research average costs for utilities, dining out, healthcare services, as well as recreational activities in order to estimate your monthly expenses. While Chicago can be more expensive than some other cities, for a large metropolitan city, Chicago is actually very affordable. Compared to areas like New York, Los Angeles, Boston or even Miami, Chicago has a lot of bang for your buck. So you just need to understand your different finances. You need to understand the lifestyle that you wanna live. And I actually did a full video about the cost of living in Chicago. And I'll put that card up above so you can go and watch that video after you finish watching this video, of course. Question 15, what are the different things that you can do in Chicago? Chicago is a vibrant city with a plethora of activities and attractions. So from world-class museums to theaters to sports events and festivals, there's never a dull moment in the city, truly. Explore the city's cultural scene and create unforgettable memories. You can visit iconic landmarks such as the Willis Tower Sky Deck, where you can enjoy breathtaking views of the city skyline. You also have the Art Institute, which is a must visit for enthusiasts, and it houses an extensive collection of masterpieces. You have Navy Pier, which offers a variety of entertainment options, including rides, restaurants, as well as firework displays. The city's vibrant music scene with venues like the Chicago Theater and the House of Blues ensures there's always a live performance to enjoy. The possibilities for entertainment and exploration are endless in Chicago. And what I love is that for every season of the year, Chicago adapts and caters to the needs of its residents at those various different times of the year. For example, you have like the Chris Kindle Market during the winter time, and the holidays are all the various different street festivals in the spring and summer. So you will never run out of anything to do here in Chicago. Depending on what your interests are, there are different things, different groups, different attractions where you can find yourself at home and have a lot of fun. Next up on the list, question 16, what are the things to do with kids? So if you're moving with kids, don't worry. Chicago has a plenty of family friendly activities. Visit the Lincoln Park Zoo, which is one of the oldest zoos in the entire country, where your children can marvel at the wide variety of animals. Honestly, one of my favorite times to go to the zoo, and it's not uh, to actually look at animals, but it's during what they call the zoo lights. So every winter they basically, I think there's, you know, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of lights that they put throughout the zoo, and it's an attraction that you go, you can kind of see the light displays, and it's a really cool experience and one that you should definitely do with your kids. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to take your kids and explore the Museum of Science and Industry, where interactive exhibits and hands-on activities will spark their curiosity. The Shedd Aquarium is another popular destination, allowing kids to get up close and personal with marine life. For outdoor fun, you can head to Maggie Daly Park, which offers a playground, ice skating rink, and a climbing wall. Question 17, what are some good nearby attractions within driving distance of the city? Chicago is conveniently located near several exciting attractions. Take a road trip to explore nearby destinations like Milwaukee, just over an hour away, known for its vibrant food and brewing scene. Madison, the capital of Wisconsin, is also another great option, offering beautiful lakes, historical sites, and a lively downtown area. I actually did my Ironman in Madison and I loved it. If you're craving some beach time, you can head to the Indiana Dunes National Park, where you can enjoy stunning sand dunes and the shores of Lake Michigan. And something I love that's only actually 30 minutes outside of the city, you've probably heard me talk about it on other videos, but it's called the Palos Hills Trail System. You also have Waterfall Glen and Starve Rock, not too much further. There's a lot of different options that you can do or take advantage of when you're thinking about trying to get out of the city for a little bit. And one of my big goals and something that is very popular amongst Chicago residents is a lot of people have lake houses on Lake Geneva. 
So Lake Geneva in Wisconsin, I think it's only about a three or four hour drive, maybe even less. I've actually never been there, but it's a goal of mine. And I don't, don't even ask me why it's a goal, um, but I've just heard incredible things about it. And one of my major goals in life is to have a beautiful lake house with a nice Malibu boat, jet skis, uh, paddle boards, and just things for both my kids and family and friends to be able to come up and enjoy. And every now and then you just need to get out of the city. And there's just a lot of things you can do within 30 minutes to an hour, or if you wanna go a little bit further out within three to four, five hours, really there's a lot of options. Question 18, this is a bonus question, and it's what realtor will I use when I move to Chicago? Well, that's an easy answer. Text the number on the screen, a team member and myself will get in touch with you. We can talk all about your real estate goals and we can make sure that you're set up for success before you move to Chicago well in advance so that we have a rock solid plan and strategy to get you into the house of your dreams. Now, that was kind of a joke, but actually I wanted to throw that one in there. If you do have any questions, who are you gonna use? You know, um, Figure out for yourself, do your research, but my team and I have been operating for the last 10 years and we'd be honored to help you. Question 19, is Chicago pet friendly? Moving with pets, well, Chicago is an incredibly pet-friendly city with numerous parks, pet-friendly establishments, and even dog-friendly beaches. Embrace the city's love for animals and ensure a happy and comfortable environment for all of your furry friends. Chicago boasts several dog parks where your pets can socialize and exercise, such as Wiggly Field in Lincoln Park and Montrose Dog Beach. Many restaurants and cafes have outdoor seating areas as well that welcome pets, allowing you to enjoy a meal with your four-legged companion. From grooming salons to pet supply stores, Chicago provides ample resources to cater to your pet's needs. I've been wanting a pup for a while now, but at this time in my life, I just Honestly, don't think I'd be a very good dog dad with the amount of travel I do and the on-the-go schedule I have for work. However, eventually I will, and he or she will love Chicago when that time comes. Okay, last question is coming in at question 20. What sports teams will I root for? Of course, you can still root for all of your other teams, but Chicago is a sports enthusiast paradise. From the legendary Chicago Bulls to the beloved Chicago Cubs and the fierce Chicago Bears, Fierce, not so sure about that, but the, the city offers a wide range of sports teams to root for. So immerse yourself in the city's sports culture and cheer on these favorite teams. Chicago's passionate sports community will make you feel like you're a part of something exciting. Personally, I like to cheer for the Bulls and the Cubs, and I enjoy the Chicago Blackhawks from time to time. You also don't want to forget about the Chicago Fire soccer team and the Chicago White Sox either. Chicago Cubs versus Chicago White Sox, this is often a debate, and so Usually how this works is anyone that's from the north side of the city roots for the Cubs. And if you're from the south side or other areas, maybe on the west side, you're typically a Sox fan. This is not an end-all be-all, but that's kind of something that I realized. And one of my favorite sports stories, or I guess scenarios, was I think it was 2016 or 2017. I was three or four years in Chicago at that time. And the Chicago Blackhawks and the Chicago Cubs which broke the curse, they both won national championships that year. So the Cubs won the World Series, and then the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. So that year was absolutely incredible. Finally, question 21, and if you didn't catch the memo here, I did 21 questions. Shout out to 50 Cent and 21 Questions, the song. I'm not gonna sing it for you or rap it, but that's why I decided to go with 21 questions today. And 21 is where can I find green space in the city? Well, nature lovers rejoice. Chicago is home to numerous parks and green spaces where you can escape the hustle and bustle. Whether it's Millennium Park, Grant Park, or the scenic Lakefront Trail, you can find tranquility amidst the urban landscape. Enjoy picnics, leisurely walks, or bike rides in these serene green spaces. Chicago parks offer a breath of fresh air and a peaceful retreat from the city's lively atmosphere. That does it guys, if you're still around, this is the longest video that we've ever put on this channel. And I'm really making an intentional effort to put more time and energy and resources into these videos so that you are truly getting the questions that you have answered. So if this has been helpful for you today, please do us a favor and like, comment, and subscribe. And definitely turn on your notifications so you can catch all of our future videos. And lastly, if you have any questions about the real estate market or an upcoming move, my team and I would be absolutely honored to help. Here's the number one more time on the screen. We'll catch you in the next video. All right, peace.